If you're looking for a quick and easy way to convert your existing PowerPoints into an e-learning or online course, you are in the right place. Hey, it's Jeff with yourlearningcareer.com. So I know if you're like me, a lot of you have existing PowerPoints that you would like to convert into some kind of e-learning or online course. The only question is, how do you do that? Well, there are a lot of different softwares out there that you can use. There are a lot of great e-learning authoring tools, but in my opinion, the absolute easiest one to use for this is iSpring Suite. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. Now, if you don't have iSpring Suite, that's okay. I will put a link in the description below so you can go out and get a uh, get a free trial. By the way, I would like to thank iSpring Suite for sponsoring this video today. All right, let's jump into PowerPoint so you can see just how easy this is. So this is an existing presentation that I've been asked to convert into something that can be put out on a learning management system. Now, what you will see with iSpring Suite is it is actually a PowerPoint add-on so i can work in powerpoint pretty much the entire time um, depending on what i'm doing within the software so that is why i say that this is the quickest and easiest e-learning authoring tool to jump into and do this kind of thing if i wanted to i could go straight to publish and i could create something that would be able to be used online. I could, I could immediately go to publish, publish it and be done and that would be that. Now, I don't recommend you do that the first time because let me just show you what it's going to look like. Before I publish it, I always recommend doing a preview and I'm gonna go ahead and preview the entire presentation because I wanna show you what it's gonna look like. All right, so here we are in preview, and as you can see, it puts the PowerPoint into a really nice online player. And you'll see it's got different, it's got the uh, title at the top, it's got uh, annotation option, you've got a next button here to navigate, you know, as I go through each slide. Then it's got an outline down here. So I could go straight to a slide if I wanted to. So it's got some really nice uh, functionality and features here in this player. But maybe when I look at this, when I do this preview, I think to myself, oh, I don't really want annotation. And I don't want this to say presentation five. I want it to say sales training. And you know, maybe there's some things down here that I, I don't want, or maybe there's things I wanna add. So that's why I say it's a good idea to preview it first so you can determine if this is how you want it to look. The other thing you can do here in preview is look at these different um, devices. So right now I'm looking at desktop view, but if I wanted to, I can look and see what it's gonna, you know, see how it would look on a tablet, on a phone. I can do the, you know, the vertical view as well. Um, but that just gives me an idea. If I have learners who are using various devices, that's kind of a cool little thing I can do there too. All right, but I'm gonna go back to desktop and now uh, actually I'm gonna exit the preview so I can look and see how I might wanna tweak the player. So to make changes, I'm just gonna simply click on player and this is where I'm going to have a bunch of different options to make changes to the way this looks. So there's a theme gallery up here. If I hover over these different items, I can see some different options. I can go to select player. I can see some options there. Uh, I'm gonna leave it on universal. Then you can see I even have color schemes. I can go here, like right now it's light blue. Maybe I want everything to be green, the buttons and things or red, you know, um, and, and if none of these work for me, I can go to this plus and create a custom color theme. So I've got all kinds of options here. And then I have different layout options as well. And again, as I hover over these, it's gonna show me what these different layouts will look like. What I will do is I'm gonna click on the plus because probably what you're going to want to do is create some kind of custom layout. 
When I click on that, I'm going to get a whole bunch more options. So for example, here on the top bar, if I click that, you see here, I can change this title from presentation five to sales training. If I want, um, I can go here and let's say, you know, like I mentioned, maybe I don't want annotation tools so I can uncheck that and you'll notice that disappears now. Um, maybe I don't need resources either, so I'll take that out. But then I have other options that I could add if I want. Same with the bottom bar. Let's go to the bottom bar. Do I want an outline? Do I want the play button? Do I want playback speed? Maybe not. Maybe I'll take that off. Um, so you can, you can make it look how you want it. You know, whatever works for you. And then you can give your layout a name up here and you can save it. And by saving it, so what's nice about that is, then if I have a bunch of these that I need to do, I don't have to go in and make these changes for every single presentation. Once I've done this and I've saved my layout, now that will be available to me in the layout. So I'm gonna cancel this and just show you. So see, this is one I, this is one I already did earlier, my layout. So I can just go to that, and now I'm not having to go create a custom one every time. I can just quickly use my layout. So once I've made all my changes, I'll just click on apply and close and I'll be ready to continue. All right, so once you've made those changes in the player, you've tweaked it however you want to, you're basically ready to publish. Because remember, for this project, we're really not adding any enhancements. All we want to do is we're taking these existing PowerPoints and we just want to really quickly publish them so that we can put them out onto a learning management system, put them online, you know, whatever it is that you're wanting to do. So I'm going to show you how to publish next. By the way, if you are finding any value in this, if this is helpful at all, I always appreciate a like. Thanks so much. All right, now let's go into publishing. As you can see, when I go to publish, I've got several options here. Um, for some of you, you'll start here. You'll go to the My Computer option where you can publish it as a video if you want, or probably more likely if you're putting it online, you'll go to the HTML5 option. And when you publish that, it's gonna produce a bunch of files like this. This is the folder that it would go into. And then this is the index file that's produced. And when I double click it, that is going to bring me into the course. So that's what that looks like there. And then probably the, uh, the most common one um, will be LMS. If you have a learning management system, you're going to want to publish your course into a package that will work with your learning management system. And you can see down here, learning course options. You've got, um, you can publish to SCORM, you can do AICC, Experience API. So whatever LMS you're using, you should be in good shape for your course to work with that. And then you also have these iSpring options. There's iSpring Space, which is a collaboration tool. You can publish your course there, and then that allows others on your team who have access to your space uh, to look at it, maybe make comments. And then iSpring Learn, that is their LMS, uh, iSpring's LMS. Um, so if you don't have a learning management system already, then maybe you know this might be of interest to you, iSpring Learn. So that's what those are. And then of course, there's good old YouTube if you want to uh, publish to that. So that is what I would do if I was just publishing something as is. Of course, ideally for me, when I'm publishing a course, I like to add, I like to use these other tools, add some more interactivity. Like for example, this is a sales course. So I would probably want to do something like a role play. So I have this role play option. Um, so, th you know, that's something that would be um, very beneficial to the learner if I added that. And uh, if that is something you're interested in, if you want to see how you would create a role play for an existing course like this, you're going to want to check out this video next.